How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. I am Mark Ellis. They call me Baby Carrots around these parts. Right over here is Ken Knapsack. Ken, what a matchup we have today. Two of the best competitors in showdown history are not here today, but Lon Harris and Cody Hall are. I can sense your tone in what you're saying there. I, I see the subtext. You are insinuating that the Professor Lon Harris, one of the most intelligent competitors ever to grace us here at the Schmodown, is picking on Cody Hall. I've heard you talking in the pre-production. I've heard you talking off air. Oh, you boy. are disparaging Cody with that kind of tone because this is an amazing competitor. Look, the guy won a nice poll on Facebook, okay? He won the movie trivia Schmodown. We had a poll, who's the prospect to watch this season? And Lon Harris did win that. He beat Mark Bernardin in his first match, but he's been doing nothing but needling and harassing and being very passive aggressive about such a task to Cody Hall. Cody Hall is somebody who, I didn't even know he's seen a movie, and now Lon Harris is challenging. He's saying all these things about Cody. Lon Harris is an up and coming prospect in here, but Cody Hall can, in sports terms, this is like the 1976 Buccaneers for all you young kids like the like the recent Cleveland Browns. It's a really bad orange team at football. John McKay was their coach. They went 0-14. Oh, <laughs> Doug Williams was the quarterback. Not I get yet. the reference. Not yet. All right. Not but yet. here's the thing. Season five of the Schmodown <laughs> is one of the first, one of the first supported by the fans directly. We got the Patreon page. It's going strong. Yeah. I love to see all the support. But what that means, Mr. Ellis, is that new things will happen here. New competitors will break out. And the professor is one of those competitors. He took on Mark Bernard last year, a great competitor. He showed him his lunch looked at it, put Bernardin's face in it, moved it around, and then after the match, gave Cody Hall the opportunity of a lifetime, and that's what we're here today to watch. Well, you seem really high on Lon the Professor, and I will say this, I think that this match puts a lot more pressure on Mr. Harris than it does on Cody Hall, because if Lon wins today, he was supposed to win. He challenged poor Cody Hall, a kid who's never seen a picture in his life, but if Cody wins, Lon Harris may never live down the embarrassment. Oh boy, some fists and fur are gonna fly today. Look. All right, Cody Hall hasn't competed since 2014. What's going on in Cody's head? This is the pressure mounting on him. Go, do I really belong here? Should I have just quit and ran away? No, no, this is, this is all Cody. This is the pressure building in his brain. It's not the professor. The pre professor feels no pressure. Well, maybe we let the fans decide because they were doing some yapping pregame. Here's a quick clip of how these matchups feel going into the competitors, huh? So I'm back in the Schmodown, and honestly, I have no idea why. Uh, I thought I established a long time ago, I'm very bad at this. And then out of nowhere, this Lon Harris guy, who I've never met in my entire life, just decides to call me out after having like one of the best first matches ever. I don't know, it's like LeBron James winning Rookie of the Year, then calling out Smush Parker for a one-on-one. -on -one. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, I think that uh, people were impressed with my first appearance on the Schmodown because they're so desperate for someone to come in who can speak about film in a, in a thoughtful, in an, in an educated, in a worldly way. I think we've had so many competitors come through who's like, oh yes, it's Iron Man has his Mac 20 suit and his Mike 40 suit and oh, which you know hero is going to cross over with which hero in the turtle movies and finally, like a breath of fresh air, the professor has come to, to bring the world of film to Schmodown fans. Do I think I'm going to win? No, that's an actual question. You're actually, okay. Uh, uh, honestly, I'll be surprised if I get two questions right. Uh, and if I do end up winning this, it's going to be one of the greatest achievements in mankind. I mean, right up there with the moon landing, the invention of the wheel, the first time we all saw JTE's Patriots poncho. I'm trying to help, Cody. It's, it's, a, it's a mark to how poor things have gotten that my attempts to uplift this young man of promise 
and to bring him to a new level where he's able to experience the world, that that is seen as harassment, is it's a really sad testament to the movie trivia Schmodown, I think. So I'm at the spectacular just minding my own business, and this guy, again, Lon, a person, I've, again, I've never met in my life, just following me around, just harassing me, just constantly asking me all these questions, and I just, I got fed up with it, and fine, I guess he won, I'm playing him now. Congratulations, Lon. You know, Cody, I, I feel for you. I do that you've been let down by so many. You've been let down by parents, peers, the schmodown, a system that just doesn't care uh, about the way that you've been wallowing in ignorance. And that is why today, Cody, I am delighted to teach you a lesson. Lon, you're probably going to kick my ass today. But if you don't, it's going to be one of the greatest things that's ever happened, and the student is going to be become the master. Go Wangers! Yeah! Can you see that? Lon Harris very, very cocky, as you might surmise. And Cody Hall looking happy to be here, but I also can sense a little bit of fire in that belly of his. Uh, of, of Cody Hall? That yeah. looked like fire to you? Yeah. It looked like he got detention, but, but you know, that this wasn't a cute 80s movie <laughs> where there's a song and a dance going on. He just looked like he was in trouble. The professor is clearly gracing us with his presence. I am thankful that he is here to bring some intelligent film discussion to the Shmoda. Well, I am not on his payroll like you apparently are, but we do have a tale of the tape. Believe it or not, Cody Hall does have some strengths in the movie Trivia Schmodown, and we're going to see what those are right now. Ken, tell us about each one of these fellas. Cody Hall, who, by the way, has a record of 0-1. His strengths include comic book movies, horror movies, and Pixar movies. Oh, what are you, a millennial? I get it. <laughs> The Professor Lon Harris, his strengths include classics, fantasy sci-fi, and German expressionist film. This is a real competitor. Do we have a German express? I'm getting the no sign. We do not have a German expressionist wheel slice. However, that there wheel that's going to be appearing in round two does have some of the strengths and maybe a weakness or two of each one of the competitors. Ken, I am ready to go. I am so excited about Cody Hall possibly upsetting Lon, the Professor Harris. You know what, Mark? I'm ready, too. It's going to be a great match. You're ready? I'm ready? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown! <laughs> Introducing first, representing the Wanger. With a record of zero wins, I say zero wins, <laughs> and one defeat, weighing in at 105 pounds with his wallet, the web slinger, Cody Hall! Oh, and Cobster getting the curtains, boys. Is everything okay? Whoa, Cobster. A lot of aggression there. Cody handling it coolly, walking out with a Space Jam jersey. That is Michael Jeffrey Jordan okay. from the Toon Squad, Ken. All right, you see Cobster. Cobster. Cobster almost couldn't fit through that curtain with those shoulders there. It's good. All right. The broad shoulders of Cobster, are they large enough to carry Cody Hall onto victory today? His opponent, representing the school of the elite, with a record of one glorious win and zero defeats. He is the Ken, did we know this was happening? He's handed out his syllabi <laughs> for Cody Hall. He's handed out the syllabi, and it's great. Uh, he's assigned, he has assigned Cody certain books to read, uh, including his own book, The Guide to Extremely Basic Concepts for Cody Hall, 5th edition, pages 176 to 190. Uh, now, this Make is sure you a, get the fourth edition. This oh, is a very yes. detailed syllabus of the class that Lon Harris has prepared for Cody Hall. Lon, would you like us to read the course description, or would you like to take the... Oh, I did not save it. I, I handed out all the syllabi. Oh, you can gladly have mine. Please, so, by all means, take mine. It's you're, going, you're going to need that. You're going to need okay. that. Okay, look, I, I will read off very quickly for the audience before we begin. This is the course description of the class that the professor has so kindly prepared for Cody Hall. This course provides an overview of the traditional 20th century film canon with an emphasis on classic significant films that Cody Hall has never seen. 
So essentially, every film that does not feature adolescent mutated reptiles that have somehow, in defiance of all logic, acquired martial arts skills. By the end of the semester, Mr. Hall should demonstrate baseline proficiency and understanding in film theory with a rudimentary knowledge of films that don't feature interstellar vehicle impersonating robots, for the love of God. That sounds like a pretty intense class, Ken. Yeah. Mark, next time, remind me, we need to work on your elocution. <laughs> Wow. You got to you project wow. from the diaphragm, from the diaphragm. Wow. He'll get it. He'll get it. All right. I am ready. Uh, if you want to read the competitors' the rules or, or, or state them to Cody, if you need Cobster to explain them in detail, let us know. Let me Appreciate elocute that. the rules for the <laughs> movie trivia Not. schmodown. Not used properly. Not used properly. In round number one, each competitor is going to hear eight questions from eight different film categories. Each question is worth one point. As soon as we ask the question up here at the answer desk, please write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. When we ask you to reveal your answer, please show your whiteboard to our television cameras. At the same time, you verbalize it into the microphone right in front of you. Each question, again, is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is obviously no stealing in round one. If a competitor should get all eight questions right in round one, you will be asked a bonus question. It is to you and to you only. Keep in mind, you do have JTE rules and challenges that can be used throughout the duration of the three-round match. Competitors, do you understand the rules? I think so. Do you clear enough? Them? All right. Then let's get ready Whoa. to Schmodown. <laughs> Three rounds to a finish. Kick his ass, Cody! All right, here we Not are. Afraid. Kicking off things. Lon, you came out to the Dangerous Minds theme song. Are you indicating that you are also a former Marine professor? Uh, I'm, I'm a beautiful, alluring professor. I was going for that part. All right, to each their own. In the first <laughs> category, the world of animated movies. Yeah. These are movies that are drawn by hand or otherwise. Ants and A Bug's Life. Both came out in 1998. But which film? was theatrically released first. 1998 was a great year for me. I had a full head of hair. It was uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Again, 50-50 shot here, and we go to five, four, three, two, one. Lon Harris, your attempt at an answer. Uh, I believe the first film to come out was Ants. That is correct for one point. Cody Hall, what did you have? I got it right, too. It's Ants! Yes! Yeah! Right. Woo! Woo! Look at yeah! that. <laughs> Ken, it seems like the crowd is slightly Cody. rooting for the upset. <laughs> Can you tell me what what percentage chance you had of getting that right? It was 50%. It, was it doesn't 50. matter. It's still 50. correct. All right. I'll take it. Question number two coming in. This is in the category of comedy. Comedies, the Yuck Yuck Pictures. What number are Bill and Ted thinking of when they play the guessing game with their future selves in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Okay, still thinking about that one. Professor Cody Hall seems to know his math better than Lon Harris. Five, four, three, two, one. Cody Hall. We'll go with 69. That is correct. Yeah. Good number. Juan Harris? Uh, it's actually 69, dude. <laughs> can we, is that, a, is that a half point more? Is that a half point, can I? No? Getting the okay. no sign from the judges. So uh, tied at two to two, Cody does not seem to be phased by the overall favoritism of the professor from the fans at large. He does seem to have a home crowd advantage here. Our next category comes from what this match has already provided us, dramas. Your question is, Matt Damon and Ed Norton play cards to pay off their gambling debt in what film? You ever had a gambling debt that you paid off with uh, playing cards? Uh, not yet. I'm still working on it. We go to five, four, three, two, one. The professor, your answer. I believe the film is Rounders. Give the man a point. Cody Hall. It was Rounders. Yeah! All right. Perfect. So far, we already, this might be the earliest in the history of the Schmodown. Somebody's actually chanted for a competitor. That either means Cody is great or nobody thought he would win. <laughs> the latter. Mm -hmm. Question four, question four, category horror thriller, horror thriller. Who played the serial killer, stuntman Mike, in Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof? Like that Q-Man, huh? 
uh, he's... You want him to do a Star Trek movie? Here, nah, here, foul here language. I, I don't approve <laughs> of foul language. Five, four, three, two, one. Cody Hall. Is that Kurt Russell? Yeah. Give him the point. Juan Harris. Watch, when you, when you present a right answer, do it with confidence. It's Kurt Russell. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, I actually like that Cody's learning a little bit something about how to become a man through Lon Harris. Exactly. This might be a team up sometime. That's in the what future. this is all about. Uh, I don't think it's that's helpful. what it's all about. Number five, your category is action adventure. Competitors, action adventure, and your question therein. Who directed Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. That Tom Cruise keeps doing stunts and he keeps getting injured, Ken. Well, you know, this is what happens when you're in your 50s and you're jumping from plates. Five, four, three, two, one. Professor. The answer is uh, Brad Bird. That's correct. He got that one right. Can Cody Hall match? I can. We are perfect through five. Right. You know, when you allow Cody to write the questions, it's much easier for him to get them correct. Yeah, regardless of who oh, you like that. Five and five. Oh, you guys five. don't like that? Question six. Question six. Category is family films. What your parents are going to let you watch tonight, Cody. <laughs> Who played the queen in the 2012 film Mirror, Mirror? Oh, boy, did I fall in love with that movie. Mm. Yeah, that popular movie in Schmoes No War. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Christian was more level-headed about it than me. Fell in love. I was wrapped up in a world of adventure. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. I'm going to need an answer. Cody Hall, who you got? Uh, it's Julia Roberts. No, no. That is yes! correct. <laughs> what? <laughs> he had no idea. He had, had no, no idea. Wow. But professor? professor. Uh, I've not seen this juvenile film. I guess Kate Blanche. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Ken. Okay. Coster. Ken. Sir, come back and, and get my eraser. Oh, he's rattled. I would like everyone in the studio and at home to know that that was not a win. Cody Hall did not actually win a match right there. That was just the overexuberance of Copster. That was Copster and Cody enacting one of their favorite movies of all time, Saving Silverman, the Steve Zahn character, to the Jason Biggs currently on stage against who would be Amanda Pete. Now we have two questions left in round number one. And Cody Hall, against all odds, still pitching a perfect game. Two more questions correctly, and he gets a bonus question just to himself. Your next category, romantic comedies. Romantic <laughs> comedies. Your question is, who does Sandra Bullock romance in The Proposal? Sandra you the Bullock actor's name? In the, we, we would prefer the actor's name, yes. Yeah. It's a good character name as well. It'd be amazing if you knew the character name. I don't. Go to five, four, three, two, and one pens down. The Professor. I really wish we would get some films that aren't American films from the last few years, but I guess Chris O'Donnell? Yeah. Incorrect. And Cody. in his reaction, Cody revealed the answer to us. Run, that run, is run, run. Is correct. It's a two-point game. And Cody Hall is one answer away from pitching a perfect round. Don't worry, crowd. We got it under control up here <laughs> to some degree. Of course, if Cody wins, there's going to be a riot, and you and I just need to get the hell out of the back entrance. Right. Your last category comes from movie release dates. Ken has the question. All right. Movie release dates, like Mark said. Final question is, the first Iron Man movie was released in what year? Be a perfect round for Cody Hall. Could be. Uh, Could Lon be. Harris. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Cody Hall, your answer for perfect round. <laughs> it is in fact 2008. <laughs> Cody Hall has Cody, thrown a perfect Cody, round Cody, one. Cody, Cody, and the crowd Cody, clearly favoring Cody. Lon Harris to stay competitive at this point. Your answer. It's 2005. Oh boy. All right. All right. Okay, uh, Ken, before yep. we ask Cody his bonus question, that will be to him and him only. Juan Harris will not be competing in this. Here's something that's really interesting is that Cody Hall is now going to be up eight to five yep. as of right now. Juan Harris, step and step with Cody for a while, then Cody just dusted him. Right. Before we go to round two where Juan will have an opportunity to come back here maybe with one of his favorite categories, mm -hmm. Cody Hall gets one bonus question. This is worth one point, Cody. There is no penalty for missing the question. And it is, from any category potentially, your question is, 
In what 1980s movie well, will you hear the quote, if it bleeds, we can kill it? Okay, everybody. I wasn't born in the 80s. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Predator? One point for Cody. Three. One point for Cody. Are you telling me? So many lucky. Such lucky could guesses. Could it be a lucky guess, Ken, or could Very it be something guesses. more? Cody look, Hall has a 9-5 to five lead at the end of round one. Let, you yep. know, uh, you can't actually guess uh, when it's at a formal exam. You have to speak from experience. An answer's an answer, man. Right. Look, I did... Cody is, is from that generation that needs participation trophies. They need to be encouraged. And, and this is this is an encouragement for, for Cody and his generation. This is what they need. I, it's cute. But now let's get to the actual part of the game. That's right. Cody Hall was born in, I believe, the year 2003. Lon Harris born during the Great Depression. And they're mm. clashing together right now. And the wheel has come out in round two where fortunes can change based on which category the Wheel of Destiny spins. Each question in round two is worth two points. Again, there's no penalty for missing a question. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask for multiple choice, at which point you'll be presented with four options, one of which is correct. That case, your question's value is reduced to one point. Keep in mind, competitors, there is stealing available in round two if the competitor who was first asked the question does not get the correct answer. Once you spin the wheel, if you're not sure of the category, you want to go for another one, you do have one mulligan, which is sports speak for you get to spin again once you spin that wheel again you must take whatever the wheel lands on cody hall you are in the lead against the odds by four points would you like to spin first or defer to your professor i'll go first all right cody's gonna give it a big spin that sometimes puts the pressure on your opponent it's, it's a good strategy That's i right. can understand it's it such a large lead it might be hard and feel yeah. insurmountable mm -hmm. cody hall massaging the wheel at the base just like they teach you to do there oh, I, goes I prefer it. Yes. the spin, and it is mixed nope. bag. Nope. nope. It's going to nope. go again. Nope. Don't like Not that. trusting spin it with mixed again. bag. Cody Hall, give that a big spin for your mulligan. Here comes his category, Ken. Good spin. He went away from mixed bags. you got to think Cody Hall was yeah. looking for something more recent, fair, like comic yeah. book movies. Something he can control, a category he knows. And oh, it could be opponent's choice. Wow. Well, and this is where the teacher can really yeah. hold the iron over the student. Lon what a Harris. wonderful educational opportunity this is going to be. I think we have to go with classic. We don't have okay. to. We really don't have to. He's going with classics. Uh, Ken Knapsack will be administering the questions <laughs> to young Cody Hall. I'll be asking Lon the questions. Ken. Please, let's see if Cody is educated in the world of classics. All right, four questions in the category of classics. First one, in which Jerry Lewis film does his character never speak? Yeah, I'm going to go multiple choice on that one, Ken. <laughs> A, the big mouth. B, hardly working. C, the bellboy. D, Cinderfella. A. That is incorrect for a steal. I believe it's the bellboy, see? That is correct. One point yeah. steal. All right, so Lon Harris already gaining traction on Cody Hall during Cody Hall's category. Absolutely. Thank you. Second question. What classic comedy features a leopard, Katherine Hepburn, and Cary Grant? Ken, I think I'm going to go multiple choice again on that. Choices are A, The Odd Couple, B, Baby Boomer, C, Some Like It Hot, D, bringing up baby. And we go to five, four. D. That is correct for a point. That is correct for a point. <laughs> Ken, I don't even know if he knew the name of the movie he was guessing, but he knew the letter D, and that was enough to get him a point. That's all you need. You're a wonderful guesser. Thank you. <laughs> Third question out of four. Who plays seasoned and crooked senator Joseph Harrison Payne in the classic Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? Can you repeat it? That, that is, is one JT, JT rule. Who plays seasoned and crooked senator Joseph Harrison Payne in the classic Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? Yeah, multiple choice. A, Claude Rains. B, Clark Gable. C, Lee Marvin. D, Edward Arnold. Uh, I haven't guessed it yet, so let's go C. That is incorrect for Steele. D, Edward Arnold. That is incorrect as well. Oh, yeah! Claude Rains. Oh. Claude Rains. 
Okay, so Ken, Cody kind of navigating his way through this category thus far. One more question remains, and this does ensure that he will still have some semblance of a lead once he is done with this very brutal category on a young man. Right. All right. Final question. What 1950s classic adventure film that is based on a novel was directed by John Huston and starred Gregory Peck at Orson Welles? And you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to go multiple choice again. <laughs> A, The Thornbirds, B, The Scarlet Letter, C, Moby Dick, D, The Golden Bowl. Five, four, A. Incorrect, four steel. The Golden Bowl? D. Incorrect, oh. looking for Moby Dick, oh. yes. Moby Dick. Oh. All right, so Ken, it is now 10 to six because Cody did get a point and their lawn also got a point, so it's still a four point game either way. Here's the interesting scenario to remember is that Classics was considered a strength of yeah. the professor, so that's now off the wheel, so he's gonna have to spin something else and the points he could have gotten with Classics have been severely diminished because Cody kept checking multiple choice. Uh, absolutely. Lon yeah. Harris, you now have a spin. Hoping for German expressionist film. <laughs> My spin was better. My spin was totally better. You can wish in one hand and crap in the other, Ken. I have. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to land on... That could be spinners to... No, coming, coming of age. age. Coming of age. Uh, I think I will spin again. He's going to spin again. Lon Harris does not enjoy watching young people fall in love. Good spin by the professor. That's the professor has been using the, spin. the college gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some... Uh, Gymnastics. All right, we could have directors, family films, family appears films. to be the spin. All right, Lon Harris, family films. You know, Ken made the joke about Cody watching them later on tonight. Maybe Cody gets a <laughs> pizza because he also could be walking away here with a win, and this category is going to go a long way to determine that. Your first question, Lon, to you and to you only as of right now in the world of family films, what nickname? was given to the intimidating duo of enforcers Fulton Reed and Dean Portman in D2, The Mighty Ducks. Uh, I will have to go multiple choice for this <laughs> inanely juvenile question. All right. Is it A, Scare Pair, B, Bash Brothers, C, Dynamic Duo, or D, Bash and Dash? I will go with B, Bash Brothers. He That's got a point. For a boy. He got a point. And he is now three away from Cody Hall. Juan, your next question. <laughs> what is the name of the lifeguard in the family classic, The Sandlot? I will again go multiple choice on this question. What? All right. Your strength. options Clearly. are, is it A, Haley Goodfarer, B, Wendy Peffercorn, C, Julie Gaffney, or D, Sarah Santorelli. I recognize B from Sarah. I'll go with B, Wendy Pepper Peppercorn. Give him another point, That's Ken. correct. That's correct. Give him another point. And not, you could hear a pin drop in yeah. the studio <laughs> when they found out Lon had guessed correctly. Yeah. Lon, you made out of one uh, the favor to the home an audience. educated guess. Tell you this, he is now one correct answer away from possibly tying. He could still have a lead going into round number three. Your next question. What pizza chain delivers to Michelangelo through the drainage grate in 1990s Teenage <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, I'll, I'll go multiple choice again. Uh, uh, I specifically in the syllabus mentioned right Mutated reptile question. <laughs> Very disappointing. Maybe Cody handing you a syllabus at the end of this match. Is it A, Domino's, B, Godfather's Pizza, C, Pizza Hut, or D, Mazio's Pizza? Hmm. I will guess C, Pizza Hut. That is incorrect. Cody Hall for the steal. I don't know for sure, but is it D? That is incorrect. incorrect as for well. Domino. Domino's Domino. is the correct answer. Problem. Really? All right. I have the app on my phone. Thanks for the <laughs> memories, Domino's. Your last question. And if you get this right without the need of multiple choice, you will tie Cody Hall at 10 going into round three. In the world of family movies, mild-mannered Don Knotts leaves life as a milquetoast bookkeeper and begins a new life as a talking fish in what live-action 
animated film. I believe it's the incredible Mr. Limpet. Two, two points, points for Ron Harris. And we are tied at 10 <laughs> yep. after two rounds. The all-important third round, Ken. We're wow. going in with a tie. <laughs> I, I, I am shocked at the way we ended up with this tie. How are you feeling about the professor versus the I, underdog, I Cody? I am actually having trouble breathing, and it's not because I have most of my meals at Sizzler with the professor. I, <laughs> I, this, is, this is intense. I, even I must admit that. And you've got to wonder if there's anything in that syllabus for either one on how to handle pressure. Competitors in round three, you're each going to get a series of three questions. Those questions are going to be determined by a number that you provide to us up here at the answer desk. Because we're tied, but Lon Harris is the favorite in the match, he actually gets to give us his three numbers first. Those numbers are going to range from one to 20. And like I said, they correspond to three different movie categories. Your first question is worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. And your last question is worth five points. Should we get that far? Again, there's no stealing in round three, nor is there a penalty for missing a question. Lon, we're going to get your series of numbers first. From one to 20, what is your lucky draw? I'll do four, nine, and 15. Four, nine. Terrible numbers. And 15. Right. And now, Cody Hall, your three digits. Uh, let's go three, 10, and 17. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Three, 10. Thank you. And 17, the crowd, a big fan of those numbers. Now, <laughs> uh, Cody Hall, you are the underdog, so you will be answering the first question for two points. Your category, number three, corresponds to war movies. And the question is, two-point question, Denzel Washington won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar in 1989 for his role in what war movie? Is that glory? That is correct. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Lon Harris, you are now up. Hopefully you do not utter a swear word after you answer this question. Horror thriller is your category. For two points, in the movie Evil Dead 2, what does Ash attach to the stump of his right arm? That would be a chainsaw. That's correct. Two, for points, two points for the professor, and we are once again tied. We go back to Cody Hall, Ken. All right. Uh, your next number was the number 10. Number 10. Three-point question in the category of comic book movies. Yeah. Oh, that's a straight. <laughs> Three points. Who plays the primary villain, Chodofsky, in the 2011 movie, The Green Hornet? Christoph Waltz. That's correct for three points. <laughs> oh, boy. Cody Hall coming up to play comic book movies. The strength for his lucky enough to get it with a three-pointer. We'll see if Lon's three-pointer is also strength of his. Lon, uh, you chose the number nine. That corresponds up here to an actress by the name of Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Angelina Jolie movies for three points. Your question is, for which film did Angelina Jolie receive her only acting Oscar win? The film is Girl Interrupted. We're tied That's again. That's correct. Wow. Tied again, and we go into round three. All right, Cody Hall, you used all your toes and fingers to select the number 17. <laughs> that is the category of Oscar movies. Oh, boy. You can do it! This is a five-point question. Jeremy Irons won the Best Actor Oscar in the 1990 film. Please provide the name. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Uh, I'll repeat it a little more clear there. Jeremy. All right, maybe <laughs> I won't. Jeremy Irons won the Best Actor Oscar in 1990 for what film? Five, four, three, two. Yeah, I don't know. One. Incorrect. Not no answer. An Reversal answer. of fortune, yep. much like this game right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're going back and forth all game. We are tied right now, and if you're joining us late, it's <laughs> weird because this is on the internet. You can just go back and watch the beginning of the match first. In any event, 
It is 15 to 15. Lon Harris has one five-point question. If he gets this right, he wins the match. If he gets it wrong, we go to sudden death overtime. The number that Lon Harris selected for his five-point category was? Number 15. Number 15. That corresponds up here to the 1980s. 1980s <laughs> movies. And your question is, in History of the World Part 1, what actor plays Emperor Nero? I believe that's Mel Brooks. Is incorrect <laughs> for Dom Deloise. Dom Deloise is the answer. And Ken, we got us an old-fashioned overtime match. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In overtime, each competitor once again gets their friend the whiteboard on the desk. We're going to ask a question, and it could be from any category. The question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. What's going to happen is we ask the question up here. You guys do your best to write it down, a lot like round one. When we ask you for the answer, we'll go name by name. Show us what your best attempt at an answer was at the same time you verbalize it. We will not confirm or deny if that is the correct answer until we receive the guesses from both competitors. The first person to gain a lead in overtime will be crowned the winner immediately. Do the competitors understand the rules I just read to you? Absolutely. Okay, we need a verbal combination, just like sitting in the exit row. Ken, you're up first. <laughs> All right, first question in sudden death overtime. What musical chronicles the signing of the Declaration of Independence? Ken, who would have thought that Cody Hall could even take Lon Harris I, to overtime? That, it's, it's amazing it's to me. Incredible. Five, four, three, two, one. Professor. Uh, 1776. Cody Hall. Nothing. And your winner, the professor, wow. Lon Harris. What an incredible match. Congratulations, hats and bandanas off to Lon, the Professor Harris, but Cody Hall, what fight, what spunk, what moxie that kid showed. He might not be done just yet in the movie trivia showdown. Look, I don't want to say I was a know-it-all, but all of you were disparaging Cody Hall earlier, saying he had no chance. Clearly, Lon recognized his potential and built him up and infused confidence into Cody Hall. Cody Hall could go on to greatness, and that is in thanks and part, large part, to the, what the professor taught him here today. You know, every kid in college has that one professor that really steers them in yes. the right direction. Lon Harris is probably never going to be that guy to anyone. However, Cody Hall, what a match he had today. Now we go to Perry Nemiroff, who is backstage with both an interview with the loser and the winner, Lon the Professor Harris. Perry, take it away. Hey guys, I'm here with the Professor Lon Harris. Lon, I have to be honest, I thought you were just gonna torpedo the motto stay in school with that match. It made me a little nervous. Well, listen, I, you know, a lot of the time, if you come on too strong with a young person, they retreat into themselves, they give up. And what I want to do is, you know, encourage young Cody, let him know maybe there's an off chance that you could actually do well and, and bring him into the fold, let him uh, really experience the Shmoda. So what you're saying is that was all planned. You were never getting a little nervous that Cody might steal that win from you was I getting nervous no I was not getting nervous I, I mean it was not it was not planned but it was my way of you know being encouraging being a good mentor and being sort of I, I don't want to say a father figure but okay I will say it a father figure to young Cody so let's say you were being a professor for yourself after that match would you add anything to your own syllabus? Do you need to change what you're doing in all these? Well, now that I realize how much of the Schmodown's time is going to be spent on Sandlot sequels and ninja tortoise films, you know, maybe I'll spend a little bit of time looking at some of these sort of, you know, children's entertainment and brushing up on it. But I think overall, uh, I still performed pretty well. You might actually enjoy Mighty Ducks in the Sandlot, I have to say. This was actually about D2, which I believe would be a follow-up to the, I did a not know. Very good follow-up, might would you I follow add. Up, but all right, so you went after Cody in this match, and everyone was surprised that you picked Cody for your next match. Do you have your sights set on one of the top players now? Well, yes, uh, I do want to go for some of the top-tier talent, some of the strongest competitors in the Schmodown, and that's why I've decided next uh, I plan to challenge Christian. Harloff? No, no, Christian Ruvalcaba, a.k.a. Cobster. Well, You're going then. down, Cobster. 
you know, going for for someone who's 0 and 6 seems like it might be a smart Listen, move right now. There's a, there's a theme to all of this, and it is young people with great potential that's going untapped, that's going sadly unrealized. And that's why I'd like to bring in Cody. Here is my wing. Come right. join under my wing. I would like you to become my first acolyte. What are your What are your plans? For, for the future after this. Uh, I guess I need to learn some stuff. So, I, I uh, would say you I'll do, learn. and I think that there is a room for you in my class. Uh, we will see about maybe one day moving you up in the class. For now, you'll start at the bottom of the class. Okay. And uh, we, we will train you, we will educate you, and hopefully within maybe a few years, who knows, seven, 10, 12 years, you too could be competing at, at a high Schmodown level. It could happen, I'm excited. And yeah. who knows, Lon, so. you might actually learn something from Cody too, and everyone could come become better players. <laughs> No? Oh, oh give, no. Okay, I didn't hey, know. Yes. No. But give, sure, sure. Give yourself a little credit after that match. Mm, okay, fine. <laughs> Glad we settled on that. All right. Congratulations, guys. Have Thank fun you. doing the whole acolyte thing, whatever that is. Back to you guys. Ken, if you thought the match itself was surprising, how about what just went down backstage? Enemies becoming friends, generations melding into one. I mean, I'm looking at the syllabi provided here, the <laughs> copies by, by the professor, and Cody is very smart. He saw what he almost accomplished today, and he realized to get to the next level, he must learn more at the foot of the professor. It makes perfect sense to me. This is a great syllabus. The last, the last movie that was required viewing on here, Resident Evil Extinction, in the year 2007, and then he says, I'm just kidding, Cody, you've watched quite enough of this garbage. No more films based on video games for you, and it does appear that Cody now has somebody to mentor him through the movie <laughs> Trivia Schmodown Waters. Very shocking development here, Ken, and let's talk about the match itself. Cody really hung in there. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I told you. I told you up top, Cody has it in him. He sits there every day, pressing buttons, watching movie talk. All these titles kind of roll around his head. He just doesn't know what to do with that knowledge. Maybe now he'll get that. And the professor, look, some stumbling blocks. We all know in the competition, uh, under the lights, sometimes things happen that, that doesn't take anything away from his knowledge. He, going forward, has to be considered for a championship title run. 1776, great year for our country, not so much for Cody Hall anymore. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. And do not forget to check out the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon. Go over there and support it so we can have more great matches like this one. Subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out the Facebook page, Movie Trivia Schmodown. And check out the Schmodown Rundown on iTunes. Ken Knapsack, thank you so much for joining us here today. Best of luck in your future travels. I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis signing off. We'll catch you real soon here on the Movie Trivia a Schmodown. What's up, Showdown fans? Frank here, and what just happened? Let's talk about it. This is your Schmodown Breakdown. And your winner! In what was thought to be an easy victory for Lon Harris, he stumbles late in the first round and saw Cody Hall go 8 for 8 and get the bonus. It was a shocking turn of events. Oh, wow! Okay. Ken. <laughs> This now makes three straight matches in which a player has earned a perfect round. Moving on, some way, somehow, this match went to overtime, and that's where Lon finally got the W by a final score of 16 to 15. Now, diving into the numbers for this match, despite Cody starting nine for nine, the rest of the way he went just three of nine for a total accuracy of 67%. Lon Harris wasn't much better either, but he answered correctly when it mattered most. His unadjusted accuracy, which does not include steals, was 69% for this match. For all things Schmodown stats, go check out SD Rundown stats on Twitter, and be sure to check out the Schmodown Rundown podcast this Saturday on the SK Plus YouTube channel or on the Schmoes No podcast feed. This week, we are joined by our good friend Patrick Campbell to help break down this past week in the Schmodown. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. Well, well, what do we have here? Well, hello, outlaw. Don't give me that hello, outlaw crap. You've been ducking me for far too long, Riley. Oh, ducking you? Hardly, dude. I'll take you on Schmodown any day of the week, any time. Any day, any time? Any day, any time, Roka, just like last time. Uh, well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? I owe you for that one. Oh, yeah, you want a Schmodown? Oh, I want a Schmodown right now. Oh, you want a Schmodown I, right I now? I want a Schmodown right now, Riley! Well, then draw. <laughs> oh, it's
it's getting hot in here. And if you think these two take movie trivia seriously, you should take the fans into consideration. Y'all have been begging for your shot at the movie trivia schmodown, and now you get your opportunity. We are proud to introduce the movie trivia schmodown app. Fans have the opportunity to play game mode and test themselves in three rounds of the Schmodown. And if you're good enough, five rounds in a championship match. Adding to the fun is the ability to create your own league. Find some fans from all over the world, climb up the rankings, deem a champion, challenge a champion, but make sure you've earned it. After you accrue enough points, you can unlock the inner geekdom division and play in another format. We're so excited for y'all to finally get your chance to play the movie trivia showdown. This app is for all you movie trivia fans who have ever said, I totally knew that. How'd you miss that? It's for everybody. Make sure you guys download it right now on iTunes for a one-time fee of just $3.99. And make sure you request to join the Movie Trivia Facebook page. And then one day, maybe you can challenge the likes of Aroka, O'Reilly, maybe even your old pal, Baby Carrots. I'll be your Huckleberry. It's Schmodown time.